Hello, everybody. Welcome back once more to the whittle off of the wood. I don't, I don't know how to make puns and stuff out of whittling. <laughs> I'm the Outback Al. I'm hot for justice. I'm Yun and Young. And I'm Chibi New. And Robert made another knife. Yeah. Ooh. Take a look at that knife. Ah. While I'm distracted, the knife slices into my thumb. Blood gushes all over my little wooden carving. Uh oh. Um. um. Robert is lost in carving and doesn't doesn't notice me bleeding everywhere. Um. Uh, Robert still doesn't notice. Robert, Robert I'm dying. <laughs> I'm bleeding to death. Robert finally looks up, or over. He reaches into his jacket again. Jesus, how much stuff does this guy keep in there? And pulls out a red bandana. He wraps it around my thumb. Hold tight. He hops off the truck, and I can hear him rummaging around in his car. He comes back a moment later with a well-stocked first aid kit, which we've just added a ton of depressor to. <laughs> Robert carefully wipes all the blood off my hand and was wipes a bit of antiseptic onto the cut. With surprising gentleness, he places a bit of gauze on the wound and wraps it all up. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. He hands me what's left of the tube of antiseptic. Make sure to keep that cut clean. It's oddly touching and... and a little sexy. I guess I'm a real whittler now. That you are. Be careful, though. They're attracted to the smell of blood. Ooh. Wait, what? What's attracted to the smell of blood? Cryptids. Tons of them out there, you know. Mothman! Cryptids? Like Mothman and stuff? Yeah! Mm -hmm. Mothman is bullshit, but yeah. This town's a hotbed for cryptozoological occurrences. Oh god, we're in Gravity Falls. Yeah, so Oregon. You're joking. Oh, how I wish I were. I'm a skeptic myself, or at least I thought I was. There are things in these woods that we can't possibly comprehend. And this is why I, I like him. <laughs> I'm just imagining Scott coming out of the woods. Holy crap, this isn't my game. <laughs> but wait, this is my game. <laughs> I think about my entire time. I think about my entire time in this city. Aside from the occasional stray coyote, I don't think it's too bad. You ever hear of the Dover Ghost? I don't think so. Well, let me tell you a story. Oh God! Ooh, I was out in the okay. woods here on a weekend camping trip with Betsy. You don't know Betsy, but she's a big pup, Pitbull. Real intimidating. I feel safe around her. First night goes without incident. I get some solitude. Betsy gets to pee wherever she wants. All good stuff. Second day, I get the idea into my head that I can hike deeper in the woods. Probably against my better judgment, but hey, we're just having a fun camping trip, right? So me and Betsy start marching in the morning. It gets a little late and we set up camp, but it's different this night. Real quiet. I can't hear the birds, the crickets, squirrels, nothing. Dead silent. Well, squirrels tend to operate during the day, so, you know. <laughs> then it, then uh -huh. it happens. And two. Then it happens. I hear the most unholy growl I've ever heard in my life right outside my tent. Me and Betsy, we go to investigate. We look around the clearing. Nobody's there. But there's this feeling. Not sure if I can quite describe it. I know someone. Something is watching us. Betsy, though, she's scared. Never seen her like that. And when she's scared... I know that I should be too, and then I see it in the distance. A man, but if something that didn't know what a man was supposed to look like made it, it just looked wrong, big, arms too long for its body, black eyes. It just stood there and stared at me. Then it disappears. I hear one yelp from Betsy and I turn around to check on her, but she's gone, into thin air. I didn't sleep at all in my tent that night, and I don't think I've slept right since. Just kidding. Oh dear. That's terrible. You're, You're lying. lying. You know You're lying? You're sure. lying. Okay, you're full of shit. You think I'm lying? <laughs> yeah, he likes that. Robert pulls out his walls and shows me, me a picture of a beautiful pit bull. Tell that to Betsy. They say that if you listen closely on quiet nights, nights just like tonight, can hear the howl of the Dover ghost. Uh-huh. A howl resonates through the woods. Doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's so guttural. Even from far away, something about it makes my skin crawl. Okay, Robert, really funny. I turn to look at Robert. He's white as a sheet. Uh-oh. 
You're messing with me, right? I was messing with you up until literally just now. I totally made that camping story up. I strain my eyes to scan the forest line, trying to see where the howl originated from. Off in the distance, I see something. It's so far away. I barely can make out a shape. It looks human, but it's dragging something. What? <laughs> um, do you see that? We should go. What just happened? <laughs> Robert and I slowly back away and get into the truck. He turns off his headlights, and I make a slow crawl away back onto the road. Or then we make a slow crawl away back onto the road. I'm too scared to look back. What was that? The Dover ghost, I guess. I chuckled nervously. <laughs> this time he doesn't seem like he's messing with me. Uh, or maybe uh, someone illegally dumping garbage on a wildlife preserve. Yeah, that's the story we'll tell ourselves. Mm. We sit okay. in silence for a little while longer. The fear of whatever that was slowly subsides as we get closer to the city. Thanks for coming out. This is fun. Was it, though? I think so? I'm sorry I haven't been in touch. I've just been in a way lately. I had to get out of the house. I had to be around somebody. You doing okay, man? Mm. Robert thinks for a second and lights another cigarette. Wait, which one of us is driving? Uh, Robert. <laughs> been, doing, <laughs> been doing a lot of thinking. He takes a long drag. As I get older, I feel more and more that I'm just drowning in the sea of regret. I was so busy chasing after these things that I thought would make me happy that I didn't think about anyone else. All I cared about was myself. I didn't even think. Robert stops. I wait for him to finish his thought, but he just stares at the road. Maybe I'm just built like this. Hmm. Or maybe I do it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice that I'm as unhappy as I am. I try to think of something to say. I remember all the times in my life when I've been sad, and there's a great many of them. But there was always a light at the end of the tunnel, something I held onto that kept me going. But there's something so resigned about the way Robert's talking. That sucks. <laughs> I'm glad you told me. Maybe we deserve to be eaten by the Dover ghost. Mm. I don't know. That's the best one. I don't know. Probably not. That sucks. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> Maybe we deserve to be eaten by the Dover ghost. Yeah, I, I would, I would go with the last one, but. Maybe that's why it's here. The Dover ghost feeds off your sadness, my sadness. It hunts us in the night. Honestly, it makes sense. Okay, good. I was, I was trying to kid around. To just be devoured for my sins. Oh. Yeah, that sounds pretty great, actually. Oh. It was a joke. Aww. I'm turning the car around. We're going back. No! Robert slams on the brakes and puts the car in reverse. Robert, Robert wait. wait. <laughs> he stops the car again. You know what? I thought about it. It's not my time yet. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I haven't finished watching that Criterion collection. They just keep adding stuff to it. But <laughs> thanks, Squidward. Just one reason to live. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah! Eggplants. Yay. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow bigger. Robert drops me off at my place. As I'm about to close the passenger door, I realize that I still have Robert's pocket knife in my pocket. I pull it out and offer it back to him. You hold on to that. Never know when you might need it. Night, Robert. Have a safe drive home. Robert smirks, then pulls away. He then immediately pulls into his driveway, which is one over from mine. <laughs> Why he gets out and waves. I tiptoe into the house, careful not to wake, wake Amanda up. She's waiting for us in the dark. Whoa, where do you come from? I look around and spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. I thought you were sleeping. I don't know why you're sleeping in that. Oh, uh, Robert woke me up to go cryptid hunting. Ellipses? You know the Mothman is bullshit, right? How dare you. <laughs> Amanda, Lang... How dare you insult what Pleasanton went through? You know what? It's fine. I finally decide to go to bed. Have you ever read Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Date complete. Oh, see how we did. It's not as good it's as not last as time. Good. No. I think it was that mini game that kind of just... Yeah. Aww. We're so S. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's because we didn't grill. What's grill? 
I don't know. Tom Take- Waits? Oh, that was the... Okay. Makes sense. Uh, if you're parking up here... Well, it's been a long day, and it's about to be a longer one. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. This is not my room. (laughs) I wonder if a man's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't but can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Wait, is it Jesus? Is she crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda! (laughs) The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strange. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her, on the middle, uh, in the uh, in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Mm. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? Leave her alone? We, I don't know that we should leave her alone. No. Did something happen? Did something happen? No, no, nothing happened. Go away. Did something not happen that you wanted to happen? Uh, should we keep pressing? I don't... I don't no. remember. I, I didn't. When I played, I did not. Did something go wrong? No. Everything Something fine. must have happened. Um, he really wants to press our right. buttons. Uh, Amanda. Get out! Okay, okay. We have no option. <laughs> leave her room and shut the door behind me. Once the door closes, I can hear her crying again. Wow. What was her, what was, what has her so upset? She seemed fine earlier. She's usually so open with me. Did I do something wrong? Is she mad at me? I guess it, I guess if she wasn't before, she definitely is now. I can't even remember the last time she snapped at me like that. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, which we seem to be getting quite a bit of lately, <laughs> I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Man pulls the toaster lever up and takes her still freezer burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh, okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short lived, but always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I, and I hanging on a wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get, get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing even happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse, but I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. Oh boy. (laughs) <laughs> I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline for her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, Pumpkin. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Ellipses. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. Mm. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just, whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Honey, 
You know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understood. Food! I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad. It took me a really long time because Aww. I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over. And sorry you're sad, but I support you 100%. Aww. This is beautiful. It's strawberry. We're a good dad. <laughs> Amanda, give me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve up some delicious cake. <laughs> so, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately, and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? I guess I should start from the top. So, you know how Emma R is going to that fancy school in California, right? Yes. Uh, Emma R, uh... The one who puked in Dead Gotham Beyond, the best friend, the other one... The one who puked in Dead Gotham Beyond is Amanda. That's yes. Amanda. The best friend was Emma P. Emma R is the other one, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think, I hope. I guess you're not technically wrong. It's good to have fallbacks like that one. Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night. They all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB final. Yikes. So, another important piece of information is, oh god, this is embarrassing. I have a crush on Noah. And, uh... Who the fuck is Noah? That's a thing. What? Whoa. I had... No. I, de I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Yes, but you can finger gun like it's nobody's business. <laughs> anyway, so the only person I told about the crutch was Emma R. And she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I kept quiet and kept going about my business. Besides? <sighs> and then one day I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy, like, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips, and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. So, I go to the mall anyway. I get to the food court, and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah, all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. I think you need new friends. What? <laughs> I think I do. Mm -hmm. It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. Yes, I know. So I storm over and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does. And Emma R just like glares at me. Grace, Grace. Uh, nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... Boring one, Gossipy one. Did she poop the bed too? I think it's Gossipy one. Yeah, we might as well just go with something like demeaning mm -hmm. a little bit. The gossipy one? I know! <laughs> Grace is the one nobody really likes. Or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything and I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but I was very angry and really embarrassed and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left, without nachos, might I add, which only further contributed to this shitty day and immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to Emma R asking how long the Noah thing's been going on and sorry, I know that's a lot. You still following? Uh, what did Emma R say? I'm a little confused, but I think I understand. I have no idea what's happening. What did Emma I mean, R say? I think I'm following this. Yeah, yeah. That makes what sense. did Emma R say? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. Emma R says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. 
Oh, God, I'm going to want to punch MR after this, aren't I? <laughs> Man pulls out her phone and reads word for word an arduously long string of text messages. Can you believe that? I... I don't know what happened. Yeah, we don't know. I can't believe that. Emma R's a bitch. <laughs> I don't know. I cannot believe that. Well, we that. don't know what the context is. I cannot believe that. Okay. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, but I am trying my hardest to be supportive. They were dating in secret for, like, months. So I told her that she's being a really terrible friend, and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me on red. And then... Wait, left me on red? What's that? Oh, like, she saw my message and didn't reply. And I know because they are red receipts. I don't know what red receipts are, but I'm just gonna nod and pretend I understand. You know you can just turn those off, right? Gotcha. <laughs> So while all this is happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable, and I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. All right, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me, half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Ha. <sighs> Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but Emma R's been there since mom died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even that mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad that she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected, I almost can't take it. That, what could I possibly say to help? And I think mm. we'll have to find out what we're going to have to say next time. Yep, leave me on a cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.